Okay. Let me... I'm going to get that up, I believe. I wasn't watching that on this one. Let me turn it down. I believe it was the 14 minute mark. <laughs> These guys at uh, Outkick, remember, that's the same dude who said he can get an all boys high school team and they could beat the best WNBA team, a team of WNBA stars or the WNBA champion. So. I mean, that, that guy's a joke. And he said he bet a million or 10 million that the best boys high school basketball team could be the WNBA champion team, the Vegas, the Las Vegas Aces or the New York Liberty. He said even you just put together a team full of great WNBA players and he bet a boys high school basketball team could beat that team and of the WNBA. So... These guys are just super dis disrespectful, but they're eating crow because women's sports is outdoing, outshining men's sports. And so you can just see the look on their faces that they're just eating crow, eating crow. And just pretending as if they sort of know the WNBA when they never watched it really and never had any respect for it because you said you can get a group of boys, a bo uh, one of the best boys basketball teams in high school to beat any WNBA team or the WNBA champion or WNBA all-stars and you would bet a million or 10 million and now you're eating crow and then you're talking about Angel Reese and the WNBA draft and where she could go when you don't know where she can go so you're just looking at the mock draft and then you try to clown the WNBA mock draft and try to clown one of the writers I believe for ESPN.com, maybe it was Michelle Vapel, AKA Michael, since she transitioned to be a man and looking at that mock draft. And I believe Michelle was like, that's if her game translates and then they sort of took a dig at that as if that is something that was just inconceivable, but yet stupid because they're saying, why wouldn't her game translate? This is because these guys don't know the game and why Michelle would say if her game translates, they don't know the WNBA. If they watched the WNBA and knew the WNBA, then they will understand why, why the writer who did the mock draft for ESPN.com would say if her game translates to the next level. And listen, Michelle, a.k.a. Michael, isn't talking about rebounding or hustle plays or leadership being a great teammate, great in a locker room or defense, Michelle, AKA Michael is talking about offense scoring. Virtually no mid range game or three point game. And she doesn't have a bevy, a plethora of post moves. And so she's limited in the post. And that was the case in college, but she was so dominant. She was able to get off these shots even through doubles and triple teams. Um, she has great feel around the rim. So in the WNBA, she won't be doubled until she earns that right to be doubled. So she's definitely, as she says, she's going to eat down, right? And I hate that. I think it's stupid, but that's, that's what she says. She's going to eat down. So I believe she'll have her moments in that single coverage where Angel Reese would eat down um, because she has really great touch um, or, you know, around the cylinder, the rim. And so I believe she'll she'll get that 1v1 coverage, that 1x1 coverage, and I think she'll succeed. But the fact is, is that that makes her too predictable. And so she would have to do something else because they'll stop that easy. They'll just make her too predictable. And she has to prove she can hit a mid-range shot. And she has to prove she can hit a three-point shot. Or she's just going to have to get it off the glass herself like Dennis Rodman used to do, right? And just get these second chance points and get a rebound, hurry up and put it back in or score in transition or when you're cutting to the basket, find place to, I don't care if she's a, a handoff receiver, you draw up a play where you can get her open cutting to the basket and let her just lay it up somehow, some way. But these guys don't understand this. They don't know 
why she would say that because the WNBA is in a league to be trifled with. This isn't the NBA where you have 30 teams and tons of players. So the talent isn't diluted. It's just 12 teams, really less than 144 because a lot of these teams only carry 10 or 11 players. And so this is the very best of the very best of the very best. And he doesn't understand that, that this is a league full of 12 Olympic teams. These guys don't know this because they don't watch the WNBA. So when so he scoffed and laughed at Michelle Vapel's uh, piece where she just highlighted saying, listen, in parentheses, if her game translates. And he just sort of scoffed at that and tried to make it seem like she was stupid and an idiot for saying that because like, of course her game would translate. You don't, you can't say that because you don't watch the WNBA. So her game offensively won't translate. What she was getting away with at LSU won't fly in the WNBA because this is a league full of 12 Olympic teams and all of these 12 teams could medal in the Olympics, but he doesn't know this because he doesn't watch it. So this is why that seemed foolish to him that Michelle put that in parentheses because he, did, he didn't understand it. So let me go to the 14 minute mark. Um, let's go to the 14 minute mark. I want you guys to hear this. We're gonna get to the transfer stuff. Personalities and style and charisma that you want to lean into. And if they get it wrong, they're idiots. This, this should be foolproof. Well, Okay, so he's talking about the WNBA that if they mess up Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, they're idiots. First of all, <laughs> Listen, he doesn't understand that nothing is given to you in the WNBA. These women have to earn it. And the WNBA, they can't mess anything up. It's, if, if these women can play, they can play. Now, the staff will try to develop them plus their teammates, the veterans on the team, and the staff will try to get them up to speed and try to develop them. But it's up to the players to do some of this work on their own, on off days, study film on off days. But Angel Reese is really busy with all of these endorsement deals. And she has a lot of time on her hands now that she's free from college. So what will she do with that time? Will she dedicate herself to watching films, studying these teams, the scouting report, getting in some of this work on her own um, during some of these off days and, and some of these breaks and to really be great getting up extra shots and uh, hey, all of this stuff. Like how many, listen, the WNBA is going to do whatever they can in training camp and in these practices to get her right. But she also has to do some of this stuff on her own. And you're not on training wheels here. And so... Listen, these guys don't understand that Angel Reese can't shoot mid-range shots with any efficiency, right? And or three-point shots. And she doesn't have a lot of low post moves. She doesn't have a good face-up game either. Now she can handle the basketball. Um, she's a willing passer and a decent passer. She can get out of transition and control the break or be a receiver on the break. She's a hell of a rebounder, hell of a box out. She knows how to draw fouls, play defense. She can guard one through five. All of that translates. But what Michelle was talking about is her offensive game. What she was getting away with in Iowa, getting 20 points and 20 rebounds and all of that, that 20 points won't work in the WNBA unless she's getting it cutting to the basket like Letitia Meir had to do in some of those games during the season or get it in transition or get it off of the glass with an offensive rebound. But just a 1x1 game, she's going to have problems doing that. Um, it's not going to be easy. And he doesn't understand that that's what she meant by it won't translate. So he was like, if the WNBA ruined this with Angel Reese, listen, it, the WNBA is going to ruin it. It's Angel that can ruin it if she doesn't put in all of the extra work. It, it, that's on her, right? That's on her. She she can't get by doing the bare minimum. She has to do more even on off days or she'll fail and she'll, be, she'll get kicked out of this league. She'll get kicked out of this league. He doesn't understand this. They don't, none of these people, they don't know the WNBA. And so anyway, let, let, let me play this for you. In this, the Angel Reese part of it, you mentioned earlier, with her entering the league at the exact same time 
Yep. Can we get a bird versus magic WNBA edition? What's weird? That that would be the that would be my big I, question. There's only 12 teams in the WNBA. <laughs> So they're going to see each other some, Did right? You? I mean, it's not, even if they're not in the same division or however they break it out, they're, they're going to play each other quite a bit. Did you see that? So you looked up the, the mock draft yesterday. I did. Uh, but I, I did. But I, after last night, I was reading through this. The write up on Angel I love that Reese, we're, now, we're now looking no, at the mock it's drafts. Weird. She's projected, Angel Reese projected to go seventh overall. Uh, in this draft to, uh, was it Minnesota, I believe? The Lynx. But in the description, it said uh, it's it's um, unknown if her game translates to the WNBA or not. As uh, Whatever expert of the WNBA draft was predicting that. I was like, what? I mean, other than Caitlin Clark, she was the most dominant player on Monday night with 17 points, 20 boards. I mean, she was she showed up too. I don't know how that doesn't translate to women's pro basketball. Because everything else does. You see that? And so, and like you have to watch the video just to see that. Oh, good Lord. What are we doing here? Yeah. Just to see that little smug look on his face. Said it. That little, ugh, I hate that freaking look he had on his face. That little smug look he had on his face when he said it. Dude, you don't, listen. You don't know the WNBA. It's not guaranteed that, listen, that's not going to carry over to the WNBA. It's it's not even going to be that easy for her to get all of these rebounds because of the length, athleticism, and the, the IQ of these women. These women in the WNBA can rebound too, and they're very, very strong. They're stronger than Angel Reese because these women, most of them play year-round. And so these women are lifting year round. They're going through conditioning drills year round. <laughs> okay. They're bumping and banging and jostling year round. Okay. And so as soon as they're done overseas, they rest up for a little bit. And here comes the WNBA season. And she has to go against these hard bodied women who just left overseas playing in a tournament. And before that, they were in the WNBA playing a whole season. And so her body, she's never experienced this before. All of this length, this height, this physicality, this strength, and it's all of these high IQs. And these women are grizzled, long in a tooth veterans. And this all of this talent on every team, these were superstars in college. On every WNBA roster, these women were all the best players on their college teams. Okay, these were big time names in women's collegiate basketball. And some of these women are great players from overseas. So this is every team, it's this way. I mean, listen, if she has to play Indiana, she's gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's Kelsey Mitchell. She was like top three in scoring before Caitlin Clark overtook her. Like that's that's insane. Oh my gosh, that's Melissa Smith. She really should have went number one overall, some people felt. That's crazy. Oh, my gosh. She has Aaliyah Boston as her teammate. That's, in, that's freaking insane. Oh, my gosh. Look, Grace Burger. She was doing damage in the Big Ten. Oh, my gosh. That's Lexi freaking Hall from Stanford. Won a championship. An excellent defender. This is freaking crazy. Oh, my gosh. It's Katie Lou Samuelson from UConn. Oh, that's that great player from back in the day at Rutgers, Erica Wheeler. Oh, my gosh, the Brazilian freaking superstar, if you will, Demiris Dantes. Oh, my gosh, Christy Wallace. Whoa. Oh, my gosh, Maya Caldwell. Right? Oh, my gosh, Victoria Saxton. Like, like he doesn't get this. It's not registering with, this, with that dude. Like, he, he doesn't get it. He doesn't know that this is the way it is on every single team. So much so that you can boot Bree Bill to the curb, that you can kick out Destiny Henderson. You mean to tell me you got that much power in the league, that much talent in the league, that you can kick out Destiny Henderson? Did you see what she was doing to Paige Beckers in UConn in the championship game? And you kicked her out of the league? You mean to tell me your league is, is that talented 
that Zaya Cook has to rob the bench? Zaya Cook. The Zaya Cook is riding the freaking bench. What? Your league is so talented that it made Haley Jones look like she should have been drafted in the third round. What? The Haley Jones from Stanford? The Haley Jones from Stanford, you made her look like she should have been drafted in the third round. Your league has that much talent? These guys don't understand this. And so this is why they can't fathom. L let's run it back one more time so you can hear this. Because these, listen, I told you, they're going to finally have to break down the draft. And then they have to break down these teams for the first time ever. You should, you should watch this because they were like sort of giggling saying, oh my gosh, look at us talking about the draft. Or like, oh my gosh, look at us talking about the WNBA draft. Like, like we've never done this before. That's not funny. That's a shame. And so listen, kudos or salute Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese for forcing this because you, you're like, you're going to have to break down the draft and these rosters. And like I said, they're going to feel guilt and shame in their heart because it's going to be a revelation like damn like the way they're talking about it like the WNBA won't last and blah 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 what do you listen I, just like i've been telling you there is no better product on earth than the WNBA and next to that you have to go to the united football league that just formed this year it merged xfl usfl usfl xfl merged to the ufl 18s the best of the best talent okay it's, it's the WNBA, the UFL, and in every every other league, the NFL, and in every other league. Like WNBA, UFL, NFL, and in every other league after that. So, listen, it's your fault why the WNBA isn't getting all of these crazy ratings. It's your fault, but the WNBA has been improving year over year every single year so far from 2022 to 2023, attendance is up 16%. Ratings are up 22%, okay? And this has been happening every year, every single year. So the WNBA was always getting better and better and better. But these guys wouldn't know that because they don't watch it. So when they finally have to dissect the WNBA, they're gonna feel guilt and shame that they've been purposefully ignoring this league and then they're going to say, oh my gosh, this league was only getting 4% media coverage. Why? When this is the best league on the face of the earth. Why? Because of sexism. Because of dismissiveness. You didn't care about women until you realized women were, were valuable. The WNBA, listen, you guys, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do this in, during the stream and I wish I would have did this in landscape mode. But I'm going to show you some anyway. Let me let me play this back real quick for you. One last time. It's 14 minute mark. Let's go back. That you want to lean into. And if they get it wrong, they're idiots. This this should be foolproof. Well, in this the Angel Reese part of it, you mentioned earlier with her entering the league at the exact same time. Yeah. Can we get a bird versus magic WNBA edition? What's weird? That that would be the that would be my I, big question. There's only 12 teams in the WNBA, so they're gonna see each other some, did right? You, I mean, it's not even if they're not in the same division or however they break it out, they're, they're gonna play each other quite a bit. Did you see them? So you looked up the the mock draft yesterday. I did. Uh, but I I did, but I after uh, last night I was reading through this. The write up on Angel I love that Reese, we're now we're now looking no, at but WNBA it's, mock it's drafts. Weird. She's projected, Angel Reese projected to go seventh overall uh, in this draft to, uh, was it Minnesota, I believe? The Lynx. But in the description, it said uh, it's it's um, unknown if her game translates to the WNBA or not. As uh, Whatever expert of the WNBA draft was predicting, I was like, what? I mean, other than Caitlin Clark, she was the most dominant player on Monday night with 17 points, 20 boards. I mean, she was, she showed up too. I don't know how that doesn't translate to women's pro basketball because everything else does. You see that? You hear that? I don't know how that doesn't translate to women's pro basketball. It's because you don't know the WNBA. You somehow in your mind, 
you believe that the talent is sort of diluted like women's collegiate basketball and there's no parity in the WNBA or that it's just easy for a rookie to come in and just dominate. That's rare. Okay, so seeing what Ryan Howard do, did was sort of rare, e even though Ryan Howard wasn't even really all that impressive. Yeah, she averaged 16 points, but her three-point percentage wasn't gaudy, okay? She didn't put up gaudy, gaudy numbers, so her three-point percentage wasn't really all that great, and her field goal percentage wasn't all that great. She At no point in time did Ryan Howard average a double-double. She, she had no double-doubles. OK, but the fact is that she came in and got 16 points and it was a respectable three point percentage. And, and so it just stood out. You know, she's six foot two with these guard skills and she could shoot from the perimeter. She can get any shot she wants to get. Now, some of that is due to just wear and tear fatigue. Listen, she just left the college game and then entered the WNBA draft and then boom, she's right in the training camp and all of that. So some of that played a role. And then Ryan Howard numbers weren't all that great this past season. And part of that is because she played straight from the WNBA and went right overseas and made it all the way to the championship game. She actually played in two different tournaments and she gained weight. OK, she gained weight and she actually responded to one of my tweets. I was like, yo, Ryan, how we're getting thick, like too thick. <laughs> so so, yeah, she gained like a lot of weight overseas. She was eating a lot of that European food over there and her thighs, her booty, just everything just swole up. And so when she got back here, uh, Tanisha Wright got her on a diet and got her back in shape and she looked like the old Ryan Howard from a rookie year. She lost all of that weight, but she jumped right back into the WNBA season and it wasn't all that great. Like we expected Ryan Howard, you go from 16, we expect Ryan Howard to average 25 a game, but because of wear and tear, attrition, fatigue, listen, you got to understand this. Kentucky, instantly WNBA. WNBA, she goes overseas and plays in two different tournaments on top of the season and, and immediately comes right back to the WNBA, but she gained all of that weight. So she's just tired. And so she doesn't have the legs. And so this is why some games, it, it was so, she was inconsistent at times last season. And thank God, like she really needed Alicia Gray. But you know, she had her moments, especially when she lost all of that weight again and got back into WNBA shape and things started to pick up, pick up for her. But her this is why Ryan Howard isn't overseas. She had to take this time off. She decided to get on the coaching staff with the Gators. And but now she's on Team USA, whatever, prepping for the Olympics. But her body needed that rest. That was too much. And she could, she could have potentially torn an ACL or ruptured her Achilles tendon by playing that much basketball. And we saw these injuries pile up last season. I told you guys this would happen. Remember, I made that video. I have that video on my channel right now. I said, Bree Jones is going to get injured. And I said, Chelsea Gray is going to get injured. And I said, I believe Marina Mabry needs to be extremely careful. I made that video. And what happened? Bree Jones got injured. Chelsea Gray finally got injured. And I said that because they both played. First of all, Chelsea Gray hasn't taken a break in a really long time. And she got all the way to the championship game overseas. It was too much basketball. And I knew she was going to break something. Something was going to tear. That was just too much basketball. And if she jumps right back in the WNBA season and goes all the way to the finals, I knew something was going to tear. And it happened. I made that video before the season started. I said, Bree Jones, Chelsea Gray, and potentially Marina Mabry, they're going to get injured. Okay? Bree Jones... Went really far in a tournament overseas. Bree Jones hasn't taken any time off. This is the first time she's taken time off because she's recovering. So she's overseas. And I noticed watching her overseas because I watched all of those games last year. Damn near every game. Practically every single game. 
And I, I watched her and in these game, she was limping in these games. She just didn't, she wasn't moving like herself. And I said, she's going to tear something. I just knew it because she was moving funny. And I was like, I think she's going to tear something. So I made that video. I made that video. I said, Bree Jones is going to get injured. Chelsea Gray is going to get injured. And I believe Marina Mabry will get injured because Marina hasn't taken any time off. It's WNBA overseas, overseas, WNBA, WNBA overseas. It's been that way for years with Marina, Bree Jones and Chelsea Gray. And I knew something was going to happen and it happened. And so like, I'm so happy Ryan Howard said no. Like sometimes you have to say no. OK, and you got to let your body recover. Tiffany Mitchell did the same thing. I even prefer Tiffany Mitchell not even play an Athletes Unlimited. I think that was kind of risky. I think Tiff Tiffany Mitchell has been going crazy. Australia, WNBA, Australia, WNBA. Tiffany needs to flat out have an entire 365 days of just resting her body from basketball. She really needs to do that. OK, um, because I'm worried about Tiffany Mitchell as well. That's just too much. It's too much basketball. So anyway, so if you if you were wondering why Ryan Howard didn't put up these gaudy numbers like people sort of expected for her second year, it's because of fatigue. It was, it was just because of fatigue. OK, so once again, you know, you're just dealing with people. They don't understand the WNBA. I brought up Ryan Howard because that's like rare. What, what we saw with Ryan Howard, Shakira Austin and Melissa Smith, that doesn't really happen all of the time where it's that kind of heavy impact. Those are sort of anomalies in the WNBA. You know, you will have some rookies that will come in and have an impact. But the impact that Ryan Howard had and Alyssa and Shakira and Shakira wasn't even starting. That doesn't really happen all the time in the WNBA because of all of the talent. It's just it's loaded. It's freaking loaded with talent. It's flooded with talent. It's an embarrassment of riches. OK. And so you don't really. And so when the rookie does rise to the top like that, they're probably going to be great. Nine times out of ten, they're going to be great. So expect Melissa Smith if she if she stays healthy because she's been going kind of crazy too. expect Melissa Smith to be a great WNBA player. Expect Shakira Austin if she could stay healthy because remember, she was balling in Israel. So she leaves Ole Miss. She plays in the WNBA after playing in Ole Miss, getting to the tournament. OK, she plays in the WNBA and then she go plays in Israel going up against Liz Cambage and all of these other players. And then she comes back for her second year and she lost way too much weight. She was, she lost too much weight. That's not the Shakira from Ole Miss and from her rookie year. She lost too much weight and she got damaged. She, she got injured like twice. That was just too much basketball for her. Okay. And, but expect Shakira Austin, if she could stay healthy, to be a great WNBA player. Expect Ryan Howard to be a great WNBA player. Expect Aaliyah Boston to be a great WNBA player. The same thing held true for Sylvia Fowles and Maya Moore when they just were just instantly spectacular from day one. Candace Parker won MVP and Rookie of the Year. So when you get these rookies that can come into a league, the most talented league on the face of the earth, and they can shine like that, they're going to be great because it's so rare to do that. Okay. That's not rare in any other league because the talent is, is diluted. It's spread out amongst 30 teams or 32 teams. Where in the WNBA, it's just funneled. It's highly concentrated to just 12 teams. So this is the most potent competition there is outside of the UFL. Okay, it's, it's WNBA, UFL, NFL, and in every other league. And that's just the way it is. Okay, so, you know, listen, my advice to those dudes is to watch WNBA basketball. Because we're going to go back. I'm going to go to the WNBA, and I'm going to show you Aaliyah Boston's first game. 
against Brianna Jones. Now, people thought Aaliyah was going to come in and dominate, especially when they saw her do damage to Elizabeth Williams in the preseason, but that was preseason. <laughs> okay. And then Elizabeth Williams paid her back in the WNBA season and just was destroying Aaliyah Boston. She was she took it to Aaliyah Boston the next matchup they had in the regular season where it counted. And so people saw that pre that first preseason game and thought Aaliyah Boston was gonna what eat down, right? And that didn't happen when she matched up with Bree Jones. And then she got a wake up call when she finally matched up with BG, Brittany Griner. It was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just it's just levels to this, man. It's just levels to this. So these guys would have never thought that Aaliyah Boston, they probably thought Aaliyah Boston day one would come in and just eat down. And that didn't happen. It took some time for her to get more comfortable and familiar. And she even said it. She said she had to get comfortable with the physicality of the game. OK, and the athleticism, the speed, the physicality, and she had to get comfortable with it. And once she got comfortable with it and sort of figured out this is the way this is going to go, she was able to build up confidence and be able to play much stronger. And this is when you saw her starting to thrive. Aaliyah Boston is going to be a great WNBA player. Now, with the addition of Caitlin Clark, it just takes her to a different level because they lack true point guard uh, Indiana Fever has been lacking a true point guard. I got to be honest. I would say since uh, Breon January left, you understand? And Breon can be a combo guard as well. I mean, sometimes it would be Breon at the point, uh, Shavante Zellis at the two, and at times it would be Shavante at the point, uh, Breon January at the two. And it, she was a combo guard, but she was, she was a point guard as well. So they haven't had good point guard play, honestly, since Breon January. If we're just being completely honest. And so they've been desperately needing a true point guard. That was Grace Berger, but Grace, but she chose Erica Wheeler over Grace Berger. Now, Grace Berger is a really good point guard, but she's not Caitlin Clark at all. And so they like Caitlin Clark is going to change everything for Leah Boston, Melissa, and all uh, and Kelsey and the rest of them. So yeah, yeah, with the addition of Caitlin and Leah is going to be even greater. Because she was already going to be great. But when you add Caitlyn, she's going to be even greater. Okay. So I definitely want to show you that game that she had against uh, Bree Jones. But what I want to do is that I know you guys see this right here from Talia Goodman. We have officially reached more than 1,000 women's basketball players in the transfer portal. 1,004 to be exact. This is a travesty. This is an abuse of the transfer portal. And remember, you guys, I went live and made a video telling you why this is happening, because uh, women, they always follow waves, trends, what's lit. That's what a crowd is. That's what everyone is doing. That's what they're going to do. OK, it's just innate. Right. It's it's inherent. It's genetic. It's, it's, it's part of their fabric, their makeup, their DNA. That's just what it is with the female gender, the female human gender. That's just the way that it is. OK, if everyone is wearing those shoes, I'm getting those shoes. If everyone is blindly following behind this stupid country music from Beyonce, then they're going to follow behind and act like it's lava. And it's, it's just pure trash. And they don't see that Beyonce is doing it because she's trying to find a way to win a Grammy album of the year. That's, that's eluded her all of her career. And she's seeing a country music is going to finally help her get Grammy album of the year. And so th this is a, 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 a sh some shield grifter stuff Beyonce is doing. And it's very disrespectful to the to the genre of country music because she's using country music to try to sort of find a way to win a Grammy album of the year. And that's just what is totally disingenuous. But. Black people, especially black women, are like, "Ooh, I like country music now. When you just hated country music a few months ago. But because a black woman is doing it, Beyonce, you're just going to blindly follow it. That music is garbage. I don't care what any of you say. It's trash. Period. End of discussion. And it's trash because it's disingenuous. Right? There's an ulterior, ulterior motive. Okay? So, this, so, everyone is jumping in a portal. Why? Because it's lit. Because that's what everyone else is doing. That's the wave. 
And then people are trying to see if somehow they can get famous. But there's also the other factor at play, which is name, image, and likeness. Trying to go somewhere where they could be in a situation where they could earn more money, get more opportunities, but also seeing if they could sort of find their way on a super team, perhaps. And so this is what it is, but also people are doing it because it's just the thing to do. And I made that video showing you that this is what the female gender does. Not all of them, but a lot of them. All the women have that hairstyle, I'm getting that hairstyle. All of the women are dressing like that, I'm gonna dress like that. It's just what it is. And so you don't find a lot of original women. This is why when you look at women's collegiate basketball, Damn near all of the black women and even some of the white women got the same old school baby hair laid edges. This is what it is. It's like, first of all, y'all should have stopped that last year. That was that's too old now. So now they just look silly. Angel Reese looks silly with it. OK, Flage looks stupid with it. Anissa Morrow looks they all look silly with it. Even, even Rakia Jackson. That was so last year. Really, some people can argue that was so two years ago. OK, but will grant you a little bit of grace that was so last year no pun intended to last year poor but that was so last year but they're still doing it <laughs> it is like uh, you know women still twerking damn y'all still twerking y'all didn't come up with a new dance yet y'all didn't come up with a new dance yet ladies y'all still twerking damn <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Like I'm waiting on them to come up with a new dance for women. They still out here twerking. Damn. You understand? But that's what it is. If 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 women are wearing those kind of jeans, all of the women are going to wear those jeans. Damn near. If if everyone is talking like that, they're all going to try to talk like that. It's just sort of what it is. Right. And so if if, if the portal was lit, I'm jumping in a portal because that's the thing to do. And the reason why it's so messed up is because you're hurting programs. You're being selfish. These 1,004 women aren't in a toxic situation, all of them, where it's a Coach Hillsman deal and shame on Coach Yolette McPhee McEwen for getting with the AD hiring Coach Hillsman to Ole Miss after he was hugging his players from the back kissing them on the forehead, but also threatening to beat them up, which is what he was doing. Literally, just go read the article. Threatening to beat, he was telling them, I'm going to F you up. If you don't do this, if you don't get this right, I'm going to F you up. Now, the player said they knew he wasn't really going to beat them up, but he used to threaten them, right? If you don't do this and you don't do that, I'm going to F you up. I'm going to F your S-H-I-T up. And then it, it came to a point where it was sort of abusive and at one point, they say he hugged a couple players from the back, like walked up behind him and grabbed them and started hugging them where they booty, their booty had pressed up against his penis. OK, and he hugging them from the back. Whoa. Then the other players, he had grabbed them and hugged them and then kiss them on the forehead. Whoa. But also telling them, I'll F you up. If you don't do this, I'll F you up. But that's who Coach Yo decided to hire. He should never be coaching again, just like Brian Aguilar is never coaching again in the WNBA. He was trying to, he was, I don't, listen, I believe it was Carly Samuelson that he was sleeping with. And that, that's a true story. That's, that's written. That's already engraved that he was sleeping around with an LA Sparks player. They said a couple. I believe it was Carly Samuelson. That's just me. Cause I can't see him having sex with Raquana Williams or Essence Carsons. But I totally believe he would have sex with Carly Samuelson and, you know, make her own earn minutes. You want to, you want to be on this roster. You want to earn minutes. We're on the road. Come to my hotel room. We're going to have some sex. And that's what it is. Okay. And when I, once I saw he was trying that with Megan Gustafson, I made sure I made that video and called him out on it. Cause who was the first player he brought to Dallas when he got the job at Dallas? Who was the first player he brought with him? Carly Samuelson. And everybody was like, ooh, the Samuelson sisters are gonna uh, be together in Dallas and blah, blah, blah. He, the first player he brought with him to Dallas was Carly. So you connect the dots. How many times Carly was on the LA Sparks when he was coaching LA Sparks? Three different times. Got rid of her, got it back. Got rid of her, got it back. And then you go to Dallas, 
And the first person you bring is Carly Samuelson. So you connect the dots. Okay. And then I'm starting to see him try to do the same thing with Megan Gustafson. I was like, he need to go. And he finally had to resign. He finally had to get out of here. Okay. So <laughs> the fact that Coach Yo hired a man in the AD who should not be coaching women's basketball. He was over in Puerto Rico doing God knows what in Puerto Rico coaching in Puerto Rico. Okay. Doing God knows what. And the fact that Enoch, his um, assistant coach, he hired at Syracuse. And that's a shame. Your parents named you Enoch. That's a special person in the scripture. Very special. Did not die because he walked with God. He was so righteous and holy. And your parents named you Enoch. OK, and you got the audacity to have been fired and got charges against you for sexual harassment. And in some case, I heard sexual assault. And that's who he had on his staff at Syracuse. And then you're walking around hugging players from the back, kissing them on their forehead while caressing them, but also threatening them, telling them, if you don't do this, I'm going to F you up. I'll F you up. Right. And that's who coach your listen, Like, I'm, I'm not shocked by this because I'm the one who told y'all at JU. Right. Y'all, I'm from Jackson. I'm, I'm from Chicago, but I live in Jacksonville and I go back to Chicago and New York and all that. But Jack's Florida, baby. JU Dolphin. She was coaching at, at JU. I used to watch JU games all the time. I, I, listen, I had to subscribe to ESPN Plus because that was the only spot that you could find a JU game. OK, so she out there ripping her players at J.U., but no one knew that she was doing this because no one knows about J.U. basketball unless you're paying attention to the ASUN conference or if you have ESPN plus and decide to say, hey, I'm going to watch a J.U. Dolphin game. But if you're if you live in Jacksonville and you love women's basketball, you're going to go. You're going to watch J.U. games. This chick shredding each J.U. players because there is no cameras there. There's no media there to say the coach at JU is talking to these players as if she wants to murder them in plain sight. This is how Coach Yo was yelling and talking to these JU players. I'm not I'm not exaggerating. This isn't any hyperbole. I'm, I'm not embellishing. This is the God's honest truth. I couldn't believe what I was hearing and seeing from Coach Yo. It was total verbal abuse. But no one cared because it's little old J.U. It's not LSU. It's just little old J.U. OK, so when she got the old Miss, I literally said and I put that on Twitter. I said she can't do what she was doing at J.U. because this is this the SEC. This is a P5. This old Miss. She's going to get exposed. And so even though you will still see her coaching passionately yelling at players, that's nothing like what she was doing at J.U. That's nothing like she like she was she was verbally abusing those players at J.U. I'm talking about abusive, violently verbally abusing those players. And so she had to tone it down at Ole Miss because it's too many cameras. This this the SEC, this P5 now. You're not tucked away in the little a Sun conference at J.U. anymore where there is no media coverage. Unless they're airing your game on ESPN Plus. Okay. So for me to see her co sign and hire Coach Hillsman, it's not shocking to me. And then I'm going to show you what Shakira Austin said. Shakira Austin was like, he'll fit right in because that's the culture, that verbal abusive culture and that sort of sexual culture. Because maybe Shakira know what a lot of other people don't know. Maybe that old Miss stab be touching these girls on the booty, getting a little bit too close to them. Maybe, uh, listen, Coach Yo turning a blind eye to some of that stuff. Because why would Shakira Austin say that? Oh, he'll fit right in. Like, that's just the culture. That's just the norm. Okay. I mean, he's the reason why <laughs> everyone left. Yeah, like what? Damn near the whole Syracuse roster left. Now, Tina, the one who went through the cancer, the Australian, the Aussie, she loved Coach Hillsman. OK, everyone else just left. And that's how Don is able to get Camilla Cardoso. That's how Don was able to get Camilla. 
Okay, they all just left because of what he was doing. So, anyway, 1,004 1, players. This is abuse. I highlighted that because everyone isn't going through a Coach Hillsman deal. They're not going through verbal abuse. They're comfortable. I mean, you got, you had like, what, two players left Oregon State. Okay, so you got three players already. Kennedy, you got three players already left Oregon already. And Kelly Graves, he's trying to build it back up. What, what this does, this hurts programs. This puts them on a hamster wheel. You're not going anywhere. And you're hurting these programs because you're selfish because you're trying to go somewhere to get lit. You're trying to be lava somewhere else. And that's what you want to do. And it's not working. Okay. And that's the problem. You see that it worked for Sanaya Rivers. And you're like, ooh, I'm going to go. You see that it worked for Tahina. Ooh, I'm going to go. And so you're just copying. You're copying. That's what you're doing. But that's what the human female gender does. Most of them. She's doing that. I'm going to do that. She's wearing that. I'm going to wear that. Oh, everyone jumping in the portal. I'm jumping in a portal, too. This is what they do. It's for selfish, vain reasons, because you're not in a Coach Hillsman environment. The campus is nice. The locker rooms are nice. The coach, is, the coach isn't verbally abusing you. You just want to do it because that's what everyone else is doing. You're selfish. And you're, you're hurting that program. This is abuse. And this number is, this isn't finished. Right now, it's 1,000. Eight hours ago, it was 1,004. There's more. This is abuse. This is borderline criminal. This is wrong. And this is out of control, totally out of control. And this should not be celebrated. Okay. And the fact that you got Coach Yo laughing about it, saying, ooh, that portal lit, that portal jumping. No, this is wrong. But the reason why she says that because she calls Ole Miss transfer you because she sucks at recruiting. She's not very good at recruiting. Okay, she can get a couple players, but she's not good. But what she is good is selling you on Ole Miss if you're in the portal. But she's not good as a, as a straight up recruit. Like she can, she literally said that she tried she tried to get Juju, and she had Juju on campus or was scheduled to have Juju, but she sort of blew it. And then she was like, "Yo, I wish I would have went harder with Juju." Like that's crazy. You missed out on Juju. Okay. And you can't say, why would Juju want to go to Ole Miss? People say, why would Rakia Jackson want to go to Mississippi State? But she did. You understand? She did. So that's what it is. Sometimes some of these programs get a major five-star player. And you would think that, pro, that player would rather go to Stanford, UConn, or South Carolina, Notre Dame. You wouldn't think that that player would choose Mississippi State. You wouldn't think that that player, okay, would choose one of these programs where it's not lit like that. But they do. They do. No one knew USC was going to be USC except me. And I already played y'all with that video. Now, I predicted this before the season ever started. Broke down the entire roster. I told you. USC was going to win a lot of games. It was going to go to the tournament. And I said Juju would be one of the nominees for player of the year. I literally said they're going to go through the tournament. They're going to win all these games. They're probably going to win the Pac-12. And Juju would be up for player of the year. I, I, what, what, didn't I play for y'all that video last week or two weeks ago where I said that before the season ever started? Okay, so I knew that they were going to do that. You didn't know that. I knew it because I know basketball. I know women's basketball. Okay, so yeah, th this is abuse. <clears throat> this is absolute total abuse. And this is so selfish and it's hurting programs. It's hurting programs. And Coach Coach Yo is loving it. She's having a great time with this. Having a great time with this because she sucks at recruiting. She's not a good recruiter. And she doesn't have people on her staff who are good at recruiting. 
Okay. That's, I mean, that's, that's just the truth. That's just the truth. She can, she can find maybe a couple, but she's not that good at it. So she needs the transfer portal and she don't give a damn about your program. She cares about her program. She don't give a damn about yours. She don't give a damn about women's basketball like that. She's trying to get a Don Staley contract. That's what she wants. She wants a Don Staley contract. So to hell with your program, to hell with women's basketball and all of this. She's trying to load up with these transfers to get more wins so she can get a Don Staley contract. And what's wild is like you put him on you put him on a team. He was a good a good recruiter. But when he got there, he was abusive. And so now everyone knows that you just put a, someone who was in, in, inappropriately touching girls, his players, made them uncomfortable and was also threatening to F them up and got fired. And that's who you put on your staff. And you think a lot of recruits are going to want to come there when they read that? You think a lot of transfers are going to want to come there when they see that? Now, maybe some will take that chance because they want to be able to show off their wares against South Carolina and LSU because they feel like if they can ball out and hoop, go crazy, brazy against LSU and South Carolina, that that could sort of help them out, okay, with popularity and get their name out there more, put them on a the map. And they can start getting better Neil deals. And that's sort of what it is. So they'll maybe they'll take that chance. Maybe they'll take that chance. So, yeah, this this is just terrible, y'all. Like, And what was wild is that once again, this is happening. Right. So if it isn't generating a lot of ratings or buzz, if you will, no one talks about it. So Jamel Hill, she's still talking about. Angel Reese and bringing racism into it. Why? Because it's getting her a lot of engagement. Well, Jamel Hill, you really should talk about Coach Hillsman. What are you doing? You should be talking about you should be talking about Ole Miss just put damn near a freaking sexual predator on their roster. I mean, on, on, on their staff. You should be talking about that. Sarah Spain, Kate Fagan, all of you. What are you doing? Shanae Gumake, you should be tweeting about this, posting about this. Drea Carter, Carolyn Peck, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, all of y'all. What are you doing? No one is saying anything because it's not Caitlin or Angel Reese. And it won't get them a lot of engagement. So everyone just throws it away. Every this should be on ESPN. This should be on Sports Center. They should be talking about this on first take. You literally hired a freaking predator. That's essentially what he is. He's a freaking predator. And he's an abuser. He abused these women psychologically, emotionally, and verbally while also inappropriately hugging them and kissing them. This man was hugging these women from the back, y'all. And lowered his hands down their pelvis, pressing them against him, hugging them. You know what that means? That means their booty was on his penis. Their booty was touching his penis. He was hugging them from the back and put his hand on their pelvis. It's getting close to their vagina. So he's hugging them like they're his wife. How you will hug your wife from the back. That is wrong. And then him hugging certain players, kissing them on the forehead after he just told them to shut the F up. So he's getting into all of these men mental mind games where he's mind effing them. Dealing with their emotions at one moment you told them I'll F you up and then you grab him and hug him and kiss him on the forehead so now we're getting into this whole pimpology because that's what that is he was even trying to dress like a pimp on the sideline and you mean to tell me this isn't all over the news the media it's not because it's not Caitlyn and Angel but if you did your due diligence and you really cared about women 
and you were really a true journal journalist, you would cover that. You would blow this up. So as a matter of fact, before we go to Aaliyah Boston and Bree Jones, uh, cause you guys see this, this is total evil. This is evil. 1,004 players. And now it's more in the portal. That's evil. That's selfish. Let's go to the coach Hillsman article. And I can really just go to coach yo and I'm someone that printed that. So hold on real quick. Okay, y'all see this? Y'all see that creep right here? Y'all see that creep? Coach Hillsman? Total creep. Okay. Um, here it is. And he, listen, he's taking a lot of heat too. And she's taking a lot of heat. <clears throat> so, as you, I hope y'all can read this. He often threatened players, sometimes using vulgar language. The way he treated us like we all knew he would never physically harm us, but he always be talking about beating our, you know what? Like, I'll F you guys up. I'll F you up. It's going to be your ASS if you F this up, said one former player. More than 10 people describe Coach Hillsman acting in that manner. At halftime of one game during the 2019-2020 season, Hillsman went around the locker room standing before every player and saying to each, I don't give a F about you. Then he flipped over a table. Seven people present recalled this incident. One player says she felt violated after Hillsman came up behind her and wrapped his arms around her, placing his hands near her pelvic region before brushing it off as a joke. Two others witnessed the incident. Three women said they felt uncomfortable when, after a discussion about playing time, Hillsman kissed each of them on the forehead. Hillsman allegedly created a staff position in 2019 and filled it with a longtime friend, Ronnie Enoch, who was dismissed from a previous coaching job after being accused of sexually harassing a player. Ronnie Enoch subsequently made multiple Syracuse players and managers uncomfortable with his actions, including asking one woman if she was menstruating. And that's who you hired. Okay. That's who you hired. And listen, Coach Yo loves it. Like, she's being totally unapologetic about it. So, man, I wish they would leave the link. I wish they would leave a link to her name, to her Twitter handle, because I know it's Coach Yo something. I'm not sure what her Twitter Twitter handle is, but she definitely uh, was like saluting him like, yes. And so here it is. Let's go here. Let's go here. Okay, yeah, Marquisha Davis declared for the WNBA draft. Uh, I don't think she's ready yet. I think she, yeah, she's not ready right now. Not yet. Now, she has a game that seems like she would be ready because she can get her own shot. But she's not ready just yet. She needs some more seasoning. Um, you know, but like I said, you never know. I mean, hopefully – she could surprise some teams and at least make a roster while developing, or she's going to have to go overseas. But 
Okay, yeah, we need to look at Shakira Austin, but for right now, let me just find what, what she said here. You see this right here? Welcome to the SIP, coach. And before she had the comments available, she turned the comments off because it started getting heated and people start coming after her in the comments like you dead wrong for this. OK, so she disabled the comments. And uh, that's that's what it is like you dead wrong for this. Why did you do this? So let's go to Shakira Austin and watch what she tweeted. OK, if this thing would act right so let's watch what she tweeted yep right here well he'll fit right in yep he'll fit right in so what does she mean by that and then some people highlighted this dude who was accused of sexual harassment and all of this stuff and he got arrested. I believe he was on. He was the coach for one of the teams. Let me see. Uh, old men's old Miss men's coach. He was arrested for old oh, domestic abuse and fired by Texas. Old Miss hired him like two months later. It's an old Miss issue. So they're just comfortable with hiring these men who have abu who have abused people, whether that's verbally or physically but also sexually harassed people and in some cases sexually assaulted them doing inappropriate things like hugging a player from the back and moving your hand towards her pelvic region. So when you hug a woman from the back, her booty is pressed against your penis and then you moved your hand lower, getting close to her vagina. And he knew that and then tried to joke it off and made it seem like it was a joke. That's a snake. I wouldn't trust that dude around my kids. Right. If I had children, he couldn't be around my kids because like he who I, it was that player 18. Was she 19? We don't know the age of that player. Was she 23? Don't matter the age. But what if he did that to an 18 year old? It, it never said her age. What if she was 18 and he tried to play it off like it was a joke? No. She should have told her dad and her dad should have came up there and did physical. Listen, like. So, yeah, like y'all see what Shakira said. Shakira said, well, he'll fit right in. What does that mean? So let's go back to Coach Yo. Because Coach Yo didn't respond to this, that what Shakira said. But yet Coach Yo was trying to give Shakira. OK, right here. Kira. God has always had a plan for you. You have a gift. You're a star. And everything positive you're getting, you're, you deserve. Congrats. Let me see this Shakira like this. Let's go through the likes. I want to see if she liked this. Well, Jessica Carter liked it. <laughs> and she, she Jessica Carter declared today also. Um, yeah, I don't. See Shakira liking this. And when did she reply? That was okay, that was at 549. That was six hours ago. And then at no point did Shakira like the tweet. So let's go through her likes. Did she like that? Nope. Her last like was well, okay, three hours ago. So she's active. She tweeted that to Shakira. She posted that. In the, in the replies five, six hours ago. What we see is three hours ago, she liked this tweet from Angel Reese. So clearly she's active. So she saw Coach Yo reply, comment, and try to give this motivational, inspirational message. But this was six hours ago. We just saw her like a tweet from Angel Reese three hours ago. So she saw this. And she didn't like this because maybe Shakira knows what really goes on at Ole Miss. And she don't like the fact that she hired that freaking creep. OK. Where is that at? Yeah, well. Well, it'll fit right in. He'll fit right in.
He'll fit right in. What's going on at Ole Miss? Why in the hell would you hire that man? And how come this isn't on SportsCenter? How come this isn't on the news? He's like Brian Aguilar. He should never coach women's basketball ever again. Ever again. Okay. So let me get out of this. And let me go to the WNBA app. So hold on. Yeah. Now, maybe they won't let me see this because <laughs> this app isn't like the WNBA app, the old iteration of the WNBA app that lets you go back multiple seasons and watch every game from all the way back. It went all the way back to 2015. But that version is still on um, the Fire Stick. So if you got the Amazon Fire Stick, that old version of the WNBA app, that's that's the app that that's the iteration. That's the version um, on Fire Stick. So I have obviously Fire Stick. So I'm able to go back and watch games from 2017. They didn't. The Fire Stick doesn't have this current iteration, this current version. They don't have that. They got last year's version and which is which was a great version. It just moved slow. It was a little bit too much buffering it was just it was funky a little bit but it had features that this one doesn't like watching WNBA seasons going all the way back to 2015 I mean the entire season for every team including the playoffs all the way back to 2015 but that's on the Amazon Fire Stick they have that old version so damn man I Really? Let me see something. Okay, we'll we'll do the Indiana Fever. And is there a way? Can we do twenty three season? And when did they play? When did they play? Connecticut Sun. Was it the 7th or the 13th? Let's just go. No, that was the preseason. Okay. So, wow. Maybe, yeah, it's got to be this one. Friday, May 19th. It's this one right here. Now, Elizabeth Williams, no, that was the preseason when she went crazy against Elizabeth Williams, that game. Okay. I felt that she had a good game well, no, no, no. All right. So I wonder if they'll let me watch this. You're talking about by league pass. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, y'all. Let me pause this. So let me buy freaking league pass again. Hold on. Let me see something. That's crazy. So I guess it ran out. I guess it ran out. Let me get this freaking league pass real quick. Hold on. Because maybe that's probably why they're not letting me watch it. Let me see some real quick, y'all. Real quick. Um, let me just try something. Oh, that's why I didn't. What are you talking about? Yeah, my league pass didn't run out. I'm on the I'm on the iPhone. On so yeah, my league pass is copacetic. It didn't it didn't run out just yet. Yeah. All right, hold on, y'all. <clears throat> Real quick. Let me see something. Let me see some. I want to make sure. Because I want to make sure. 
but they're still not even letting me watch any watch these past games. It's just showing me the box score. Okay, so they won't even let you see the box score unless you have unless you have content is hidden to prevent spoilers because you have high scores turned on in your account. Okay. All right. This is how I could know if I need to renew. Okay. Be patient with me, y'all. So I'm on a fire stick right now on the TV, the WNBA app, and I need to see if they're if they will if they're gonna let me watch any game on here, then I know it's not finished. Okay, so hold on. Real quick. So boom, we go to they call it like run it back. So hold on. All right, so Sparks 2023 20, season. Let's go to when they play the Seattle Storm. So let's see. September 10, 2023. Oh, no, I'm straight. <laughs> this must have been on one of my old, because this is that Samsung phone. So I don't even use this. So this one, this this is from some old freaking account I had with the WNBA. So yeah, this is old. Because I'm like, hold up. I don't think my, I don't think it's ready to be renewed. All right, hold up. Yeah, I'm like, hold up. I know mine didn't run out just yet. So anyway, they're not going to let me um, look at this. But what I can do is let me pause this and I'm going to put this under my new account that I have. And let's just see what happens. Hold on. Okay, so anyway, I don't know what's going on, but yeah. Magador, and there's Jewel along with Sammy Whitcomb. Time now for a prominent Swedish road to recovery. A fairly healthy season for the Seattle, the Seattle Storm. The only injury to report once again. I don't freaking get this, dog. Like I freaking look. I'm watching Lee. What are you talking about? It's like. I'm not about to get these people free money. Would I, um, I have league pass? Like, hold up, what's really going on here? Let me see something real quick, y'all. Anyway, just look at the box score. So, Aaliyah Boston, 24 minutes. She had 15 points, nine rebounds. Okay, she shot pretty well. Or maybe Aaliyah got her the first time. It was one of these Connecticut games. Maybe it was this one. Hold up. It was one of them where 
Bree Jones was like, chick? Yeah, 19, 11, 3, 2, 1. 58%. Let me see. Indiana. No, Boston got yo, Aaliyah, Aaliyah the truth. Yo, but I made a video about this game. And I broke down both of them. And I know for a fact, like, like we, we gotta watch this game because this wasn't an easy game. Oh, yeah, this is an old account. So hold on, y'all. Let me let me put in my new account. Because I'm like, yeah. All right, so be patient. Let me put in my new account. Hold up. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we're freaking back. All right. So I don't know which game it was where it was was pretty rough. I think it was this game, May 30th. All right. So they will let me watch that. Okay, so let's do it. We're just going now. I hope YouTube don't punish me for this, but I just really want to watch like the first quarter. Okay. Beautiful Tuesday night in Connecticut. We have the WNBA on NBC Culture. Her rebounds and she defends. We can't leave out Aliyah Boston, number one overall pick. And this is before Bree Jones got that injury. In the double. You ask her teammates, her coaches, that's a big... Connecticut held on for a victory opening night, 70-61. Indiana battled to the end. 
but the Sun pulled it out, needing two of the season between the Sun and Fever to kickstart an action-packed Tuesday in the WNBA. Kelsey Mitchell has a knack to get going against this Sun team. Delivers into Boston. Let's put the right hand back up. Against, to me, Julianne, a player in Brianna Jones, they almost look exactly the same. They mimic each other's games. They really do. I like this matchup a lot. You've got a couple of true posts on the floor, which don't always see. Hayes rattles in the three, and Connecticut's off and running. Hayes, who has really had a heck of a season so far, just continuing to dominate. It doesn't matter what team she's on. 16 at New York, Saturday. That was a good pass by Leah. Hull down the lane. <laughs> Indiana's first bucket. Lexi Hull, year two. Sixth overall pick out of Stanford last year. And Hull's been playing with a lot of confidence. And nice to see one go in. Did not score in that Atlanta win. Bonner up and under. Jones rips it away. Okay, Lexi okay. It, it started, it's starting to come back to it because I made a video about this. This matchup, like, right after this game ended. And you you just see the savviness and the IQ of uh, Bree Jones because Aaliyah did get the best of her in the first matchup. And so Bree Jones is like, there's no way I'm just going to let this rookie just do me like this. And so she was really physical with Aaliyah this game. And she got the best of Aaliyah. But even though Aaliyah put up good numbers, that just show you how great Aaliyah Boston is. Because even though Aaliyah got 20 this game, it, it, she clearly got out muscled in by Bree Jones. She got outplayed by Bree Jones, but she still put up those numbers. So that just lets you know how good Aaliyah Boston is. <laughs> so that's what I was highlighting in this game. I was like, yo, she got outplayed by Bree Jones, but she still put up numbers. Like Aaliyah is the freaking truth. Okay, so like, let's go. That's where Jones can be just so deadly. On the glass. Boston sets the screen, rolls, one dribble. Rookie, are you kidding? Y'all just see that. <laughs> you see, yo, AJ Reed, she doesn't have these moves. Okay, so we need to just go back a little bit. That's Hold that two-person game that Christy Stiles was talking about in pregame and that Hull's been playing with a lot of confidence. And nice to see one go in. Did not score in that Atlanta win. Bonner up and under. Jones rips it away. Lays it home. Did y'all see how she ripped that ball away from Aaliyah? But go ahead. That's where Jones can be right, just so go. deadly. On the glass. Boston sets the screen. Rolls <laughs> one dribble. Rookie. Are you kidding? That's that two-person game. Oh my gosh, y'all. Did y'all just see that? First of all, she screened, then re-screened, hit the open space, catch it, up, under, dribble, to the basket. Angel Reese doesn't have these moves, y'all. This is what I'm saying. So when Michelle Vapel says that if her game translates, to the WNBA. She's just talking about her offense, not her rebounding, her defense, her tenacity, and or none of that. She just she's just talking about her offense because she doesn't have those moves. Okay. So let's finish. Christy Sides was talking about in pregame and that pace and space. They're trying to work the ball and get good shots. Melissa Thomas off one foot. You can count that one. Plus the five. Did y'all just see what she just did to Melissa Smith? And do you really think these college players can handle that? First of all, Melissa Smith is thick. She has girth. And she just knocked her over like she weighed 115 pounds. Okay, it's just levels to this. Let's finish. Stephanie White likes to see early actions by the Sun. They want to get out and run as well. It's something she highlighted, off-ball screen actions. Too many on-ball looks she felt in that game against New York Saturday. The team's first loss. It got congested oftentimes, and the offense was stagnant. Here, they're, they're getting right into it, Julianne. Yeah, they really are, and, and that's an important thing. You just make those adjustments as you go, and she told us that in pregame. I mean, this is a team still trying to fully get used to each other. Most teams are in that place, but the chemistry
two will come, and they're getting used to playing with each other. Melissa Smith coming off a double-double, two on the season in three games for the Fever. Boston has been fed early in Connecticut. Nice finish by Boston. That was nice, Aaliyah. Oh, my gosh. That was, listen, like, Angel doesn't have those moves, y'all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And that was tough. That was tough, y'all. That wasn't an easy make. That was physical. That was tough. And she still got it in. Angel doesn't have Aaliyah Boston's moves. And Aaliyah Boston can shoot it from the mid-range, and she can make threes. So... Let's go. And that's a nice one-on-one -on -one move right there. Not a rookie move if I've ever seen one. Lots of confidence. Leading all rookies in scoring field goal percentage. Hayes blew a great opportunity. Split the defender. Do, do y'all see who's dribbling that ball up? That's six foot four, Nalissa Smith, and she could play all five positions if we're being honest. Tremendous guard skills at six foot four. <sighs> okay, let's let's finish. Now Angel Reese could dribble, but she can't dribble like Melissa. So let's finish. A true rim attacker that Connecticut has felt it's lacked over the last couple years. The maturity, Julianne, on display by the Rook. And when we talked to Christy Sides about her, she just said, when I hear Aaliyah Boston's name, I smile. Now, I like <laughs> because more, I've been watching um, her play throughout her college career. And you don't right know how a player is going to translate at this level until you get to see them night in and night out. She has done that. She's brought that ability to score the college level into the pros. Erica Wheeler, trickery around the basket. Spent last season at Atlanta. Must have felt good for Wheeler to go back to the ATL and score a victory. It was with Los Angeles in 21. Boston Did y'all just see that? Yeah, Wait a second. Did y'all just see that? Uh, Dewana Bonner was six foot four. That was a move point guards do. Okay? That was a move point guards do. Like, we have to go back. Okay? Like, we, we just have to. Hold up. there for the rebound. Like we, and you don't know how a player is going to translate at this level until you get to see them night in and night out. She has done that. She's brought that ability to Look at the one Bonnie, y'all. Six for four. To the pros. Erica Wheeler trickery around the basket. Spent last season at Atlanta. Must have felt good for Wheeler to go back to the ATL and score a victory. Six for four, y'all. Los Angeles in 21. <laughs> that's six freaking foot there. four. That's six foot four. That's six foot four. Okay, that is extremely rare in women's collegiate basketball, especially moving like that. That's just super freaking rare. So. This is what Angel Reese has never faced a woman six foot four in college that can do that. She she just hasn't. So there's a huge learning curve here, man. And you can't blame the WNBA if Angel doesn't succeed. The, the stupid dude on Outkick is like, don't F this up, WNBA. The WNBA can't mess it up. It's these players that's going to mess it up for themselves. Okay, because unless you're Aaliyah, Shakira, Melissa, or Ryan Howard, or Candace Park, or Elena Deladon, or Brianna Stewart, do, do y'all people know that Jewel Lloyd, like, kind of sucked her rookie year? Kelsey Plum didn't really catch on at first. Like, hold on, let, let, let's do this real quick, and then I gotta, I'm gonna go to the stats, to Jewel Lloyd rookie stats, because, like, Jewel Lloyd is. It, do y'all realize Jackie Young kind of like sucked the first two years? So anyway, it doesn't happen with every rookie. So you can't blame the WNBA if Angel Reese sucks. It's just levels there. I just showed you two six foot four, six foot four women handling the ball like a freaking point guard initiating the offense. Let's go. Rebound. Indiana wants to play with Pace. 
He says it did last year, and Christie's side squad draws another foul on the Connecticut Sun. Oh, come on, get this and, and, you know, I think they're learning all these different things. They're looking to get quick shots, but not too quick. It's this balance with a young group and a few veterans trickled in. It wasn't just afternoon, it was lunch. Lunch, okay, that's right. <laughs> well, I bring not up, past 12 o'clock, okay? With well, a young team, you always look forward to having lunch hour. <laughs> What a hand in our face, too. Hayes, welcome back to Connecticut. Two championships mm. with UConn. Ten years of her mm. career in Atlanta. First year with the Sun. Mitchell dancing in the face. Can't do that. Hayes confident. Dang, y'all. Do y'all see this stuff, man? This is next level, man. Like, I'm just looking at Natisha Hyde, man. And, she was a freaking superstar on Marquette. She was their superstar. That chick was pulling up from 30 off the dribble like Caitlin Clark at Marquette. <laughs> and she's a freaking role player on the team. She's a starter, but she's a role player. And, and that starter role, this chick was freaking pulling up from 30 like Steph Curry at Marquette. Like, I don't think y'all understand how talented this league is. So don't blame the WNBA if Angel Reese kind of sucks her rookie year. You need to educate yourself on the WNBA. She's, she, listen, there's a high probability she's going to freaking suck. <laughs> okay, hold up. And so if the endorsement deals go away, then that's on Angel to get her mind right, to get her game right. Yeah, she says she want to start from the bottom and build back up. You're going to have to do that. So let's let's go. Watching and shooting in the flow. Hayes has been so confident, and I do like the way that she's able to just come off this screen. It wasn't even a screen; it was kind of a fake screen. Just goes right behind the play. If you don't have your hand ready in her face when she catches it, she's gonna nail it. As six of Connecticut's ten points, Heidemann draws two defenders. Skip past Alyssa Thomas. Again, physical with Aaliyah, y'all. This is the game the within the game, and that's the other point of that video. I was showing y'all how physical it was and how cute and how savvy Drew Jones is. Smith and Hull also each have one. This is a wake up game. Aaliyah is nice. Staying out of foul trouble is key. Boston did foul out in the opener against the Sun. And Float D, not that time for Thomas. And so that's what I was talking about. She was being more physical. The box out IQ, like, listen, she was frustrated because Aaliyah got her that first game. As a matter of fact, I think Indiana won that first matchup and Aaliyah got the best of her. And so Bree Jones is like, chick, are you stupid? And just went crazy this game. And it was the game within the game that people weren't paying attention to. And I, that was the impetus of the video that I, I put out on that matchup. And so, his teammate Marilyn Terrapin as well, Brianna Jones on the old glass, and that's a fascinating dynamic as well. Both teams rebound well offensively. And Brianna Jones just battles. I mean, look at Lexi, y'all. She's constantly <laughs> battling, and I like the Lexi play between play. her and Aaliyah Boston down low. Yo, Lexi, do not play. Lexi would have snatched that freaking rebound. Lexi is going to make sure she stays on the WBA roster. She got to get that three right, but she's going to make sure you you just can't cut her unless you're just cutting her because she's just breaking all of these shots. But you honestly, you really shouldn't be cutting Lexi. All right, let's go. And we said we would be looking a lot at the front court, right? Y'all see that? Play. Did y'all see that she just, has she just bullied her? Right, you gotta understand the first matchup, Aaliyah won. And she was like, No, I'll never let this happen. It's the same thing happened with Elizabeth Williams. Aaliyah got Elizabeth Williams in the preseason. <laughs> and the next time they played the Chicago Sky in the regular season, Elizabeth Williams is doing damage to Aaliyah. Like, hold up, rookie. <laughs> Who's just so powerful and strong in there. She battles every single play. You can throw anything at her, and she is not going to get ruffled. Boston sets the screen for Wheeler. Keep an eye on foul trouble. Y'all see that? Y'all see Bree Jones? Jones? Listen, y'all. It's levels to this, y'all. It's just freaking levels to this. 
And just that want to from her to say, okay, that was embarrassing the first matchup. I'll never let that happen again. And so this was now, listen, y'all, Aaliyah is, Aaliyah is a great player. Did she hit some rough patches during the season? Yeah, she hit that rookie wall. But she battled every game. She's going to be a great player in the WNBA, period. Anytime you can have success as a rookie in the most talented, most difficult league, most competitive league in the Milky Way galaxy that we know of, because they're they could be playing basketball on Mars or Venus. So who knows? But at least on planet Earth in the Milky Way galaxy, the WNBA is one of one. They're sitting on top of everyone else. The most difficult league to make, the most difficult league to last in, to stay in. The most competitive league in the Milky Way galaxy on planet Earth. The most talented league on planet Earth is the WNBA, period. And if you could stand out as a rookie and hold your own, you are going to be great. Period. Okay, and that's what Aaliyah Boston did. And now you add Caitlin Clark, it's levels to this. So what we like, we clearly see you guys can go back and watch this if you have the WNBA app. Okay. What I want to show you is Jackie Young. Okay. So let's go to Jackie Young real quick. How do we do that? All right. Let's go to Jackie Young. Let's go to the Aces. Where are you, Aces? Aces should have been at the top. Am I missing something? Okay, yeah, anyway. Let's go there. Let's go to Jackie Young. Because you remember, she was number one overall pick. Jackie Young. So we're going to look at her numbers, her first two years in the league. She was the number one overall pick, WNBA draft. View all stats. Let's go to all stats. Not all state, but all stats. Oh, she's a Virgo, September 16th. That's why she's such a perfectionist. She's a freaking Virgo. Did, do y'all see these numbers the first two years? Remember, she was the number one overall pick, y'all. Y'all see this? Six points. Shot 32% from the field. 31% from the three-point line. She only attempted one three a game. That's why I'm like, <laughs> we all giving all this praise to Becky when Bill Lambert didn't want her shooting threes. She only attempted one a game. And in the next two years under Bill Lambert, she barely attempted a three a game. What, what Becky Hammond did was tell her to shoot more. And so she shot more and she made more. If Bill Lambert wanted her shooting threes, that, that wasn't what he wanted. Feed the ball to Asia Wilson and feed the ball to the bigs, to Liz Cambage. And that's how they were playing inside out. But he really didn't like a lot of that out. And so her rookie year, she attempted one a game. The next two years, she barely attempted a three point shot a game. That's not the way Vic, excuse me, um, Bill Lambier wanted her to play. So everyone is like, oh, Becky Hammond just changed her life. Becky Hammond got her three-point shot like that. No, she probably would have put up these numbers if that was what was required of her was to shoot at least five threes a game. But that wasn't Bill Lambeer's philosophy. That wasn't his system. That wasn't his game plan. Okay, so only thing Becky did was tell her to shoot more. And she shot more. She got in the gym. She shot more and got a three-point shot up. So it wasn't some brilliant genius move by Becky. It's just that that wasn't what Bill Lambier wanted from her. So everyone was like, her three-point shot improved drastically. I'm like, of course it improved drastically. She was barely shooting, attempting a three a game. <laughs> what are you talking about? Right? So like these people don't, these people don't know what they're talking about. So as you can see, you can see the numbers. So we, we're not going to give her a lot of crazy stuff with uh, threes because she didn't attempt. She got three rebounds, four assists. She had a good assist turnover ratio her rookie year. It really, every year, that's pretty solid. First two years, she didn't even get a steal a game. Um, she got one double-double her rookie year. 
Yeah, so like I said, her numbers were just unimpressive. And you start to see in 2021, it, it picked up, it got better. But in 2022, when Becky got there, it just jumped because Becky wanted her to shoot more threes. And she just got better. Flat out. Flat out. She just got better, man. And and so that's that's what it was. Now, let's look at Jewel Lloyd. Because oh, everyone is praising Jackie Young. But Jackie, Wan, Jackie Young was not lava her first two years. So that's why I'm saying all Angel Reese has to do is get with the shoot, the shoot, the shooting coach, the shot doctor, the shooting coach, get that midi right, get that three game right, that three ball game right, and work on her handles to make them a little bit more crisp. And in two years, like we just saw with Jackie Young, Angel Reese would be a top 10 player in the league. And the same, the same is true for Rakia Jackson. So if you don't believe me, matter of fact, let's look at Kelsey Plum. Now, there's an asterisk that Kelsey Plum did get injured. But so let's go. Remember, she was the number one overall pick. OK, just like Jackie, just like Asia. They got they had three number one overall picks. That's kind of wild. So let's do this. So as you can see, her rookie year, eight points, shot 34 percent from the field, shot 36 from three. That's solid. And that's that's. That's what it was. She had a terrible assist to turnover ratio because she's not a pure point guard. And so you saw three assists to two and a half turnovers. And that's that's what it is. And no, she had a negative plus minus two years, the first two years. She never got a double double. So she never got 10 assists at no point. And you look at her second year in the league. She got nine points. Field goal percentage picked up. Three point percentage picked up. And then you look at 2019, eight points, um, field goal percentage went back, went down. She regressed with the three point percentage, all of that. Still no double doubles. Her, uh, this, that's what it is. And you look at 2021, that's when things got better. Um, yeah. And then 2022, 2023. So really her first three years, she was she wasn't good. I mean, she just wasn't, right? She just, like, she just wasn't. So let's look at Jewel Lloyd. Let's look at Jewel Lloyd real quick. Let's go to Jewel Lloyd. Let's go to Jewel Lloyd. Filter by team. Let's go to Seattle Storm. Let's go to Jewel Lloyd real quick. Listen, Skylar Diggins struggled her freshman year too. Like, let's not forget about that. But let's let's look at Jewel Lloyd. I'm talking about freshman year, her rookie, her rookie year. And Jewel Lloyd was the number one overall pick. Okay. So, damn, Joy. Jewel Lloyd been in this league nine years. Time definitely um, kind of flies, right? So her rookie year. 10 points. She played 34 games, 10 points. Field goal percentage, 41. Look at that nasty three-point percentage, 20. Great at the free throw line. Got you three rebounds a game, only one assist to two, two turnovers, no steals, no blocks. At no point in time did she get a double-double, and she was in a negative four plus minus. So, that's why I'm saying, like, and she got damn near 26 minutes a game. And so that's just what it is. Like, she struggled her rookie year, and then it picked up. She got better. That's probably going to be Angel Reese and Rakia Jackson. So if she struggles her rookie year, and these goofy dudes on OutKick and them saying, see, see the WNBA ruining her. No, they, she's getting 25, 26 minutes a game. Like, you need to understand that this league is not a joke, man. This isn't a freaking comedy show. This is the real freaking deal. You're at war. You're playing against freaking Navy SEALs, man. <laughs> this is freaking combat. What do you think this is? Let's look at Skylar Diggins real quick. Because she struggled her rookie year too. 
Let's look at Scarlett Diggins. Scarlett Diggins Smith. She's an absolute Leo. <laughs> Scarlett was a freaking Leo, son. Okay, hold up. She's a total Leo. Yeah, she's been in the league nine years, too. All right, 2013, she's getting 26 minutes a game, Tulsa shot. Remember, that's that draft where on her team, she got one of my favorite players just based on her defense at Pitt, Brianna Kiesel, baby. And that's why I start following the Tulsa shock. I didn't follow the Tulsa shock. Now, I knew them when they were the Detroit shock, but I start being a fan of the Tulsa shock because of Brianna Kiesel, because I loved her at Pitt. Just great defender. And so I follow Tulsa specifically for uh, Brianna Kiesel. But and then that was that same draft where they also got Amanda Zowie B. And so remember Liz Cambage was on the team, but you got to remember, just think about this. They had Skylar Diggins, Amanda Zowie B, and she was dominating at Minnesota. I believe what she left after her sophomore year or something like that. She left early. And uh, and then you had Brianna Keys with that crazy defense she brought over from Pitt. So anyway, look at look at her rookie year. Eight points, shot 32% from the field, 24% from the three-point line. Only got one rebound a game, two assists, one turnover, a negative three plus minus the whole year, and at no point did she register a double-double her rookie year. So, but then look, look how she just took off after that. I mean, that Skylar Diggins is going should at least go to the hall of fame look how she just took off okay that's that one two that's that never say die that's that grit she has resolve and she just she's just not gonna die because she took off after that and we just saw that with, with jewel lloyd took off after that kelsey plum took her two years to get right you know and really took her kind of like three years but and then Jackie Young, it took her two years to get right. So um, what I'm just saying, I'm just, listen, we know what Skylar was at Notre Dame. We know what Jackie Young was at Notre Dame. We know what Jewel Lloyd was at Notre Dame. We know what Kelsey Plum was. I mean, the leading scorer next to Pistol Pete. So we know what Kelsey Plum was at the University of Washington. And... They struggled their first two years or Skylar and Jewel struggled their first year. So don't blame the WNBA if these women struggle and you think that it's the WNBA's fault why she's on the bench. No, she's on the bench because she's not good enough. This is a league of 12 Olympic teams. That's what you don't understand. Like, I don't think y'all understand this real quick. Like, Elena Coates was a top five pick for the Chicago Sky. What are you talking about? She was dominant. She was absolutely dominant with South Carolina are you, until that injury happened. What are you talking about here? Kayla Davis, dominant. She got drafted to the Dallas Wings. Skylar Diggins, you already know what that is, right? Dulce coming over, so much potential, so much upside. Jorna Holmes, dominant at Texas. And Jorna Holmes is a point forward. She got Kennedy Carter handles, and she can hit the three. Jordan Horston, we already know what she is. Jewel Lloyd, Ezzy, Jade, Necker, Mercedes, Victoria, Sammy, Kiana Williams. What are we talking about here? Do y'all see these players? This team, this this roster, this roster finished last in the WNBA standings. This roster right here currently constructed, even last year's roster, could medal in the Olympics. You could send this team over to the Olympics, and this roster would at least get you bronze or silver. If you don't believe me, check this out. Let, let me show out kicking these people trying to blame Andrew Reese struggles on the WNBA potentially this upcoming season. Because I played for you what they said. If you blow this, shame on you. No, it's up to Angel to get right. You don't know. You saying that because you don't know this league. So hold up, y'all. Like, let's go. Let's go to these teams. Boom. Let's start at the top Atlanta Dream. Let's go to the roster. 
Show me the roster. Okay. No, nah, I don't like that. We got to go to player. Let's get out of that. Let's go to players. Let's filter by team. Atlanta, let's go. I want y'all to see Letitia me here. Stop playing with me. Jordan Canada, UCLA, stop playing with me. Okay, uh, Khadija K, Tina Charles, Nia Coffey, Lorella Kubage, Asia Dirt, Alicia Gray, Nas, Ryan, Haley, Cheyenne, Ariel Powers. Are you, listen, y'all, this is a freaking college all-star team. In the WNBA, these were the very best of the very best in college. On one freaking team, this team right here will win bronze in the Olympics. Let's go. Let's finish going. Let's finish going. Hold up. Filter by team. Let's go to the Chicago Sky. Lindsey Allen, Kennedy Carter, Diamond the Shields, Dana Evans, Kaiser Gondrasek, Isabel Harrison, Sika Kone, Marina Mabry, Michaela Anguere, Taya Rimmer, and I'm happy she's back. Okay, Michigan State, uh, Taylor Rimmer, she also played for Notre Dame. Uh, Bree Turner, Elizabeth, come on, come on. This team right here winning bronze in the Olympics. Moving on. Connecticut Sun. Let's go. Rachel Bannon. Remember, she put up like 60 plus points and Kobe was all over her. Hold up. Rachel Bannon, Dewana Bonham, Leah Brown, Dijanae, Renaya Davis, Ty Harris, Mariah Jefferson, Bree Jones, Tiffany Mitchell, Astu, Olivia Nelson Adota, Shea Petty, Kiana Smith, Kiana Smith. Oh my God. Handles added his world three level score. She just need more minutes. Alyssa Thomas, Sydney Weiss, Oregon State can play three positions. Uh, Jocelyn Willoughby, come on. This team winning bronze or silver. Hold up. Hold up. Let's go. This team might even, I uh, don't know. This team definitely winning bronze or silver. Let's go. Dallas Wings. Uh, Jalen Brown, Kalani Brown, Veronica Burden, Emma Cannon, Crystal Dangerfield, Natasha Howard, Lou Lopez Senechal, Tierra McCowan, Arika Gumbawale, Katrina Parde, Satu Sabali, Maddie Segrist, Stephanie Suarez. Y'all, this team right here winning bronze or silver. Hold up. Let's go. Indiana Fever, Grace Berger, Aaliyah Boston, Mike Caldwell, Demiris Dantas, uh, Tammy, and she's in the Euro the Euro League finals with um, the London Lions, and they just lost today. But anyway, uh, Lexi Hall, Kelsey Mitchell, Katie Lou Samuelson, Victoria Saxon, Alyssa Smith, Christy Wallace, Erica Wheeler. This team winning silver. Let's go. Especially when you add Caitlin Clark on the roster. Hold up, Bree Bill. Kirsten Bell, Alicia Clark, Sydney Colston, Chelsea Gray, Megan Gufson, Bria Harley, Morgan Jones, Kamaria McDaniel, Candace Parker, Kelsey Plum, Kia Stokes, Asia Wilson, Jackie Young. This team winning gold, silver gold. Let's go to the Sparks. And this is without Camilla Cardoso and Cameron Brink, by the way, or Angel Reese, Julie Alleman. Monique Billings, Lexi Brown, Ray Burrell, Laysha Claren, Ania Clouton, Zaya Cook, Derek and Hamby, Vera Kiss, Ari McDonald, Taylor Mike Sale, Kia Nurse, Azara Stevens, Stephanie Tolbert, Lee freaking Yiru, and she's in the finals as well, the Euro League finals. Uh, yeah, this team winning silver. This team winning bronze and silver. Hold up, let's go. Minnesota Lynx. Bridget Carlton, Nafisa Collier. Liz Dixon, Ruthie Hebert, Natisha Hyman, Dorka Juhas, Kayla McBride, Diamond Miller, Jamie Norrit, Alana Smith, Taylor Sewell, Kayana Trailer, Courtney Williams. Olivia, come on, come on. This team winning bronze. Keep it moving. I'm like I'm showing y'all Olympic teams that, that will at least get you bronze or silver. Every last one of these teams. New York Liberty, look, Kennedy Berg, or you got Ivana. Um, you got Brianna Frazier, Morgan Green, Sabrina, John Quayle, Benijah, Stephanie, Naira, Stewie. Like, come on. Come on. Silver. I say silver. Mercury. Rebecca, Amy, Morgan, Natasha, Kalia, Sophie, BG, Kiki, Mad Kiki, Maya Hollingshed, back six foot four. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward. She could play four positions. Natasha Mack. Boom. Y'all already know. She got dead filthy, though. You understand? They drafted her for a shot block ability. She could run the floor like a freaking cheetah athletic. But anyway, she got bounced around. But anyway, uh, Shug Sutton, uh, DT, Kristen Williams. And people forget about her. This is number one overall uh, freaking recruit in the nation. Top recruit. And went to UConn. And because of the injury, people forgot about her. Come on, this team winning bronze. 
this team winning bronze, I would say bronze or silver. When you, especially when you add BG, they definitely could win silver. Okay. Seattle Storm. Hold up. Yeah. Seattle Storm. Oh, we just went through Seattle. Last team, Washington. Ariel Atkins, Shakira Austin, Elisa Kunane, Ed, Stephanie Dawson, Queen Egbo, Emily Angsler, Maisha Hines Allen, Dee Dee Richards, Carly Samuelson. And Carly is plays for the London Lions with Megan Gustafson and she's in the finals. Uh, Brittany Sykes. Okay, like Shatori Walker Kimball. Come on, this team winning bronze. And with a healthy Ed, they probably win in silver. So literally every WNBA team on, that I just showed you, you are in a league full of 12 Olympic teams. All of these teams is either going to win bronze or silver in the Olympics. That's a true story. That's real life. So don't blame the WNBA if Andrew Reese struggles out kick. But you, you don't know this because you don't know this league. So when I'm listening to this dude and he's trying to hate, he's trying to hate. He's hating because he doesn't know the WNBA and he wants to blame that they use the WNBA as the butt of all their jokes. No one watches the WNBA. Why wouldn't you want to watch the WNBA? This is 12 Olympic teams. Why wouldn't you? You don't watch the WNBA because they only get 4% of the media coverage and they're splitting that with other women's sports. You're stiff arming them because they're women and you're only paying attention to women basketball now because of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. That's it. Caitlin Clark. Because without them, you would be treating women's basketball like you always treated women's basketball, not holding any segments unless it was a scuffle, a fight, or some, some super something super controversial. That's it. So I just so I just showed you 12 Olympic teams in the discussion. I just showed you 12 Olympic teams. Right? I just literally showed you 12 Olympic teams, and that's just that's a true story. So Anyway, y'all, let me go on and get up out of here. Y'all take care. That's it.